One by present from Neptune, our salvaged canoe <laughs> that Frick picked up last night on Nightwatch. And you're gonna go and have a cocktail in it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is the idea. We are two crazies from South Africa. This is Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now full-time living and sailing on our new home, Sisu. There's not too much wind. We're going at something like, what, 1.7 knots speed over ground. And I think it's time for us to test this thing out, whether it will work or not. And I made fancy, fancy cocktails. Yeah. There. So. A cast away. Who guess who won the fight? <laughs> <Not me. laughs> okay. Just Whoa. don't fall over. I think that's a bit rough to have a cocktail in. Gonna have to reel yourself in. What just gonna spit in the front? It looks like a banana boat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and now the wind's picked up, we're going faster. No, 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 just don't fall out. This is not funny. I don't think you can have a hand to have a cocktail with. What? I don't think you should have a cocktail with. Oh. <laughs> As I stay into the wind. As I slow down. Whoa. Can I get the ladder down? No. Okay. That didn't work out that well. Um, but at least the something something i'm not even sure you can call it a canoe is still there and i'm back on sisu thank you for pietru and i think now it's time for that cocktail <laughs> oh, lessons learned so, make a bigger rope fool around with a cody <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah sisu picked up speed to what yeah yeah, we went from two two knots to four point six or four point seven. No bloody wonder we battled. <laughs> it is very quiet. No engines. No wind. Even the code D every now and then just says, okay, not enough wind. Yeah, and I think I'm going to start the drone. Yes. Perfect. Today we're gonna have a fry on the on Sisu again on passage and I think I'm gonna make the bread with it. Very, very good. 
because it's very good. Speechless. <laughs> Nessie is very, very good. Thank you. It was the bread was absolutely divine. A great meal once again. In Turkey, we're not allowed to fill our own bottles, and as you can see, our own bottles just barely fit into into our gas gas locker, so they are optimum. And the ones that Turkey give is these ones. So they also not they just not optimum. They not the right size, not the right length or height. So and they not allowed to fill our gas bottles so while we quite far and out and about an ocean i'm going to do a siphon from this tank to one of our tanks so the first thing that you need to make sure is that there's no leaks <laughs> it might prove to be horribly wrong something can go horribly wrong and also don't smoke while you do that so not me and peter is smokers um, so we need to ensure that this one is very tight into this one. So the main thing is you must make sure that this is very well sealed and there is no leakage. And this one is still closed. And you have to ensure this is sealed very tightly and very properly. So nothing is loose and nothing. Then you can open up this one which will allow the gas to go into the pipe and you can test whether it is leaking or not by just smelling and then you just need to find a way that this cylinder is upside down and that there will be a continuous flow down into your bottle here and you can just open it up and the liquid of the gas which means the LPG the L side of the petroleum gas will then start flowing into your receiving cylinder so that one has to be high it flows from the pipe nicely in a liquid form into into your receiving and you just need to wait till it stops flowing you can also feel the weight of that one and that one will also start getting the, you will not feel any liquid inside it in the beginning I was quite worried because people told me you cannot mix butane and propane and that you might cause an explosion and then I started doing this research about butane and propane and LPG is actually either one of them or both of them or a mixture 40 60 percent sometimes 80 percent sometimes 80 20 or sometimes it is 60 40 whatever the country at that stage is and even some countries in the same country on the northern side perhaps they will have 40 60 percent of butane and then other one they will just swap it in the southern side to have a different ratio where the propane is again the the biggest percentage so you can mix butane and propane that's there's no problem with that it is actually many countries have it already pre-mixed depending on the availability of these different gases then someone told me the top one must be hotter than the bottom one that's also not it you are actually transferring liquid from the liquid to only the liquid down to the bottom one um, so it's not about the gas it's not about the the hot and cold and one must expand and other one must be it helps if one is cooler than the other one that but that's not the reason why the flow is happening it's completely gravity the other thing that people told me is that that one must always be smaller than your receiving one which is kind of like makes sense but it has no problem if you do overfill your your receiving um, cylinder you can just open it up vent until this there's, there's sometimes even a, a, a preventer but you can vent it until the gas comes out and then you can close it again and start using it 
you do not want to have liquid LPG going into your gas pipes to your gas burners because that that's just yucky and 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 it might explode and it cause all sorts of problems at the burner at the gas stove or or even your your briar so you have to make sure that you're receiving one at the end of the day is only bringing out gas and not liquid and you can just open it up and it will vent until there's only gas and then fine close it and you know it is filled properly so overfilling is a problem if you don't know about it but if you know about it just make sure that it is um, in a gas form that goes into your system and i think is there no more shoes yeah. so what i'm going to do here you can feel there's actually nothing there's no liquid anymore in, in this one so first close this receiving one before we close this one i'm just going to put it like this so that uh, any gas or any liquid that's still in the pipe can run down into this it's not a big issue but you can just do that and then when you're finished you can close it it's closed this one is closed and you can now just release the pressure here and now all the gas is out and you have to be very much vented no smoking please <laughs> Okay, so I need to test this now that there's no liquid coming out of here. And the way I'm going to do it is just open up. And you can see it's only gas that's coming out. So no liquid is coming out, which means if we do open it up into our system, then it will only be LPG gas and not the liquid of the LPG. Okay, I think it's time to take a bath so what we'll do is we're going to put sisu in half too so we turn 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 the sail is backing and now we just turn back completely and lock the steering wheel and observe no boat is going to overrun us. Not soon, anyway. So our speed over ground is already 1.3. I think we are in a hope too. Our blue line is already showing sideways. Okay, here it goes. We are moving, eh? Yes, sir. I am not that brave. <laughs> 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 Fresh water. We've got fresh water hose down pumps, which works like a charm. So all the bathing is done, it's now the rinse off. Just keep in mind, in a hove to situation, you're actually still drifting. Look at this. We are definitely drifting. So don't think, I hope to you stand still. <laughs> we are actually drifting at 1.3 knots. Do we get out of our hope to? We just complete the tack and then we tack again. Or we jump, but the best is just complete the tack because this is basically a failed attack. So <coughs> Pedro is guess what Pedro is doing. <laughs> Just for a change, I'm doing something completely different today. I'm making a video. <laughs> oh, that's very different, yeah. 
and I'm going to do an engine check. Something I want you guys to hear. You hear that noise? That is the prop spinning, so we need to go and feather it. While Petro is doing a movie, busy with the next video, I am going to do a quick check. Engine check, we have run the engines now for quite a while. And you guys, if you guys have followed the saga of the warranty, then you know my warranty is again gone. Because according to that dude, Muammar from the Philippines, I just avoided my warranty again by running the engines for almost two days. The nice thing now, because I can check my sail drives to see that the sail drives is not leaking any oil or any water into the oil. So everything is super hot, so don't touch the engine. So I'm looking for any milkiness. Actually looks very good. Let's check the level as well. So you just put it on and then take it off and the level is a-okay. So the reason why I'm very interested in the sail drive oil and the condition of the oil for the sail drive is if we do or if we did put somewhere a fishing line or a, uh, something in a prop and it actually got into the seal of the sail drive then it might broke the seal and the water will come in. And now that actually showed me there's no water in, so I, I can assume this was no damage if we ever caught a fishing line. I'm now in a starboard side engine, and it seems like if I look here in my in the bulge below the engine, there's some coolant. And if I look at my coolant level, it did drop a little bit. There's no other water, so that is very clean. There's no other water. No other water, so I can only assume that somewhere the engine is leaking coolant water. So that's the thing that I need to keep track of. Because we now 100 miles from the closest shore and busy sailing I will not try I will try to look for it but if I can fix it I will fix it but while we at anchor it's maybe a better spot or inside the marina The plunge under the sea, under the sea. But we're going a little bit fast. Yeah. <laughs> I rig the bridle, so that I do have a safety, a safety line. So, but at this moment, I'm going to jump outside of the safety line. You can almost feel the power of the code D kicking in every now and then. As we go up a swell or down a swell, I think. Down up a swell. Wow. Okay. What you will not do for for YouTube clicks. <laughs> As we're approaching Malta. Look at all these folks. And it still carries on and on and there's a fish pond, a huge fish pond on the other end of it as well waiting for me to go through it and if you came to visit us I don't know if he's ill or just very 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 tired shame about 45 miles from Malta 
strict instructions not to disturb the bird <laughs> and get to put some food out there too and water <laughs> so, so the little bird is just it's not actually a little bird it's almost as big as that winch it's like a dive of a pigeon or something and it's just like standing there swaying as the boat is going up and down <laughs> this has been my companion for all night she, I think we have bounced all of the sails and back into the long station put up some food and water and she's been sitting there the whole night and we moving around in five nights we are arriving at Malta old side it sounds looks like and then there's the modern side look at all these sailing vessels but look at this castle when you come in here how amazing is that I think Malta is going to be an awesome place to explore. All this wall just carries on and on and on and on. Nikki guy, this is Isu. Look how cute! Man, oh man, this is going to be a big place to explore. But look at all these boats. Look at these little, little windows. That must be all down there at the back. Making the bed is a mess normally. And I normally do it every single morning as I wake up. This is contortionist work. <laughs> 